If you are enjoying a sweet mango today, remember one thing. The tree from which this mango was obtained has been raised by some person who might not be alive today. Similarly, the present generation is enjoying a lot of discoveries and inventions in the field of science and technology. However, most of the people behind these discoveries are not alive today. Some have dedicated their whole life towards a discovery, some have become experimental subjects for their own study, and many have sacrificed their own life to present their discovery to the next generation. There are many stories in the journey of scientific discoveries and this video is related to such kind of stories. One such story is how DNA was discovered as the genetic material. Today, even a small kid knows that DNA is the genetic material. However, decades ago, even experts in the field of scientific community believed that proteins are the molecules that carry genetic information. Though in the mid 19th century, Gregor Mendel, who was known as father of genetics, concluded that some factors are transferred from one generation to another, these factors were misunderstood as proteins for a long time. In the early part of the 20th century, before the advent of antibiotics, pneumococcal infections were deadly. Meanwhile, in 1928, a bacteriologist named Griffith was trying to develop a vaccine against pneumonia caused by a bacterium called Streptococcus pneumoniae. During the experiment, Griffith cultured Streptococcus pneumoniae bacteria which showed two patterns of growth. One culture plate consisted of smooth shiny colonies while other consisted of rough colonies. The difference was due to the presence of a sugar-based coating called mucus coat in S-strain bacteria which makes them resistant to the immune system of mice, whereas the R-strain bacteria did not have the mucus coat. In the first stage of experiments, Griffith injected both S and R strains to mice. The one which was infected with the S strain developed pneumonia and died, while the other which was infected with R strain stayed alive. So he considered S strain as virulent that is able to cause disease and the R strain as avirulent strain. In the second stage, Griffith heat killed the S strain bacteria. That is, he treated the S-strain bacteria to high temperature, causing the cells to die, and injected this into mice. The mice were alive this time. In the third stage, he mixed the heat-killed S-strains and live R-strains and injected the mixture into mice. Surprisingly, this time the mice developed pneumonia and died. In addition, when he analyzed the blood of dead mice, he found living S-strain bacteria in that. Griffith showed that a substance could be transferred to harmless bacteria and made them deadly. Based on these observations, Griffith concluded that the R-strain bacteria had been transformed by dead S-strain bacteria. The R-strain inherited some transforming principle from the heat-killed S-strain bacteria which made them smooth-coated as well as virulent. He assumed this transforming principle as genetic material. Griffith's experiment was a turning point towards the discovery of hereditary material. However, it failed to explain the biochemistry of the transforming principle. Hence, in 1944, a group of scientists, Avery, MacLeod, and McCarthy, continued the Griffith's experiment in search of biochemical nature of the transforming principle. Their discovery revised the concept of protein is a genetic material to DNA is the genetic material. They purified this transforming principle with several steps. The purified substance gave a negative result in chemical tests that are known to detect proteins, but they gave a strong positive result in all chemical tests that are known to detect DNA. In addition, protein and RNA degrading enzymes did not inhibit the transforming principle. However, DNA degrading enzymes, that is DNases, eliminated the transforming activity. These results somehow gave the idea that DNA is possibly the genetic material. However, Avery had a doubt that some contaminating substance rather than DNA could be the transforming principle. This confusion continued till 1952. And in the year 1952, Hershey and Chase used a different approach to conclusively identify the DNA as the genetic material.